I was going to sit back and I was going to wait patiently as I wanted to see what the guilters and mainstream media were going to spin today as Brian Koberger and his defense team went ahead and obliged to the demands of the prosecution. They filed the notice of alibi to the court. And guess what? <laughs> They're going to have a lot of spinning to do to make it all make sense now. I've only got one question for you, State of Idaho and the prosecution. Where's that cast report now? That one the defense has been requesting and requesting for you to turn over? The one that you said you were still waiting because all you had was just kind of the draft of it? Where's that at now? I'm A.R. Hayes. It's a convict thoughts. Big day. Big day. Everybody was preparing on the guilter side of things. They were going to shred up Brian Koberger for his just out driving alibi. Yeah, I mean, he said it. It's still in the documents. He was. He was out driving, checking out some parks, taking some pictures of the sky. And everybody on that guilty side of things is going to really be picking that apart because they just clearly believe there's no possible way he was doing that. But if you kind of rewind to that last hearing, you remember that last hearing that we just had where Bill Thompson and Ann Taylor were clashing at it over the defense expert, over the surveys, you know, feeding all that false info that the defense was doing? <laughs> well, what about that false info now that those cell phone pings that everybody was clarifying as stocking? Well, guess what now, ladies and gentlemen? He drove that area a lot. He went to a park. He ran. He took pictures of the nighttime sky. And everybody's going to say, oh, that doesn't mean he didn't commit this crime. No, that doesn't mean he didn't do it. Ladies and gentlemen, the defense has an expert. Not just a nobody expert. This gentleman's an expert. And guess what? He's willing to come to court on Brian Koberger's behalf to join the two gals that stood in court as the defense attorneys for Brian Koberger saying they felt he wasn't guilty. They felt he was innocent of this very crime. Now they have an expert that's saying the exact same thing. That he could prove that that vehicle wasn't even in Moscow when the crime happened. Imagine that, ladies and gentlemen. Imagine that. Even though we dissected, and even I as a content creator have dissected the fact that I, even I felt maybe he cruised through the neighborhood. Maybe he got caught on camera. But now this expert is saying he wasn't even in Moscow. He was far from it. And guess what? These drives that evidently Brian Koberger took late at night to the early morning hours on numerous occasions with data to support and back it. We're not in Moscow, but they still may have pinged that very same tower. This expert's bringing, bringing the data that now the defense attorneys are looking right at the prosecutor. Hey, Bill. Yeah, you, Bill. Where's that exculpatory evidence? The one that you uh, either are hiding and not turning over or the one that you just may have misplaced or deleted or got rid of. Where is it? Guess what that's going to be, ladies and gentlemen? It's the very evidence everybody from the very beginning claimed was pointing towards the stocking. 
You know, it's going to be crazy when that cast report shows that he wasn't there. Wouldn't that just be amazing? The whole detailed outline that everybody has made of this guy, stalker, hunter, sick, creepy bastard, the guy that's just in the neighborhood checking out the girls whenever he wants. Was he? Was he in the neighborhood? You know, the defense was pretty quick in wanting to talk to Bethany in regards to exculpatory evidence. What does she know? If the defense can prove Brian Koberger was never even in that area, has no connections to the victims, no evidence in the car, the apartment, anywhere that connects Brian Coburn to the actual crime scene or the victims. Bethany, let me ask you again. What could you know? Should I maybe say, who do you know that may have been there that's not Brian Coburn? And maybe that's why you left the state nervous and scared? Is that why the local area is not talking much? They just maybe don't have the threat isolated. Hmm. Pretty interesting stuff. I mean, I hate to say it. These types of things do happen sometimes. Does this mean that Brian Koberger's off the hook? No, it absolutely does not. Because obviously the prosecution's going to attack this. They're going to bring their experts to try and prove that the defense expert is wrong in regards to what he is saying. They're going to try to prove that Brian Koberger turned off his cell phone, which would create the dilemma for the defense to be able to prove where he was or what he was doing and what he was doing. But guess what? Ladies and gentlemen, just like everybody's jumping up and down, saying, wait for the prosecution. Wait for all the evidence. Wait for their experts to be able to prove this or that. Nobody was saying, wait for the defense's experts to step up to the plate and say he wasn't even in Moscow, Idaho when the crime transpired. Does that throw a little bit of a loop? into people's idea of what possibly might have gone on. Who's wearing the tinfoil hats now? Now, I'm not going to say this gets Brian Cobra off and everybody should just jump up and down saying he's innocent. It's not proven either way. And if I'm a man that holds the system accountable to the fact that it's got to be worked its way through and proven guilty at trial. Innocent until proven guilty. That's the way the United States works and is built. But also remember, just because you get a little bit of good news in regards to the defense having an expert that's willing to testify in regards to the cell phone data, doesn't mean that 100% is going to prove Brian Koberger innocent because there's going to be other evidence. It's going to be interesting to see what it is. I mean, obviously, the state is still going to be gung-ho that they found Brian Koberger's DNA at the crime scene. And even though we have discussed this over and over and over, in regards to touch DNA, not being the most creditable source of DNA that you would like to find at a crime scene to try and find somebody guilty of a crime. We still have to establish a reason why Brian Koberger was not there, but that DNA ended up there. That's still got to be discussed. Now, it is not... 
on the defense's shoulders to have to prove Brian Koberger innocent. Remember that. That's a key to this. It's kind of like NFL football. Whoever gets the ball first in overtime actually has the greatest chance of winning the game because all they have to do is score a touchdown. All Brian Koberger defense team has to do is pick holes in the prosecution's offense to make sure there's reasonable doubt. But I will say at the end of the day, I would like to actually see him be found not guilty. I want him to be able to live with his chest out and say, I told you I was going to be exonerated of this. And look, I sat idly and worked my way through the process and proved my innocence. I would love to see that. When it comes to trials and things of this nature, it's not always fair. And Idaho is not really the most legitimately fair state when it comes to the way prosecution just truly has the upper hand. The laws themselves, the very laws that Bill Thompson, every time he's filing a motion in regards to Ann Taylor's request for discovery, he is relying directly on that legislation that benefits the prosecution. That's not going away, ladies and gentlemen. That's not going away. It's going to be really difficult to navigate through this case without going through the roller coaster of momentum. Right now, the last hearing and today's filed motions only add to the power that we've seen the defense display. I know, people will say, wait a minute, what do you mean? The de especially the guilters, they'll say, the defense hasn't done... They actually have. They've given you a sign of the power of their defense. They were the first ones to come out and shock everybody and say, look, no trace of anything in the car, nothing in the apartment, nothing at the office. There's no connection to any of the victims. Okay, our alibi in the very first go around is he was out driving around at night by himself. Everybody flipped a gasket on the guilty side saying, well, ha-ha, I told you he had no alibi. Everybody does understand, I hope, that just like the prosecution, it takes time for investigators and experts and people to collect, examine, and determine the authenticity of evidence that they've put within their files to prosecute the case. The defense has to do the very same thing. When a defendant is putting up a fight saying they are innocent, their investigators and their attorneys have to dive deep in to the very evidence that someone like Brian Koberger tells them to look at so that they can decipher whether it actually supports his claim of being innocent. It takes time. It's not fast. And in my belief, this is just my belief, coming from a background of having to be a defendant and fight through the process to get to the trial, working with my attorneys, the investigators for the defense, I remember what it all took, and I believe Ann Taylor knew I believe they've had this expert for a while. And they've had this exculpatory idea of evidence for a while. And that's why she's been picking apart. 
at the prosecution saying, hey, we want that cast report and we want this, this, and this. And she's doing it on purpose because she only had her. I mean, this is, if you really think about it, this is huge. This is a big deal when it comes to evidence. I don't care what anybody out there laughing about it thinks. It's a big deal when it comes to evidence. Anything that could corroborate you not being at the scene of a crime is huge. And an expert that's willing to join these defense attorneys and say, I'll put my entire career on the line. I believe this man is innocent, and I can help prove that. I mean, what type of fit are we going to see next in the courtroom from Bill Thompson? What is he going to attack next? Because remember, right now, we're just in the midst of fixing the survey debacle, in everybody's opinion, of how it unjustly fed information to a jury pool that could benefit the defendant in getting a change of venue. Which, I mean, that's still a big deal as well, because I don't feel as though the prosecution is going to drop this case. I've said it numerous times in the past. I felt there was going to be a dismissal at some point. But I didn't ever feel as though the prosecution would actually drop the case. So that's key. We're going to have to watch moving forward what Anne's next move is. Because remember, they did file for a dismissal. They did file within that dismissal. Lack of evidence and other prosecutorial misconduct. Don't forget that. Prosecutorial misconduct. And what could equate to that? Withholding exculpatory evidence or not deeming it as lost. I think some things are starting to shape up as to why Ann Taylor has been filing the motions that she has and why she's made the request the way that she has. And at the end of the day, Brian Koberger might just be back out stargazing and taking pictures of the sky again in the very near future. Mayor Hayes, Convict Thoughts, great to see you all. I just had to jump on here because it was pretty cool seeing a good alibi come with some expert Right there, backing. They're backing Koberger. What's next, Bill Thompson? What you got up your sleeve? Because Ann Taylor had a bomb under hers. Have a good night. Talk to you soon.